Mother, are Pulse 40% Bran Flakes really the best tasting cereal of them all? Well, your father says so, and father knows best. <laughs> Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young, his father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's largest-selling brand flakes, Post 40% brand flakes, and by Instant Postum, the good-tasting drink that's entirely caffeine-free. Spring is still a few weeks away, but out in the white frame house on Maple Street, it looks like the season of showers and mayflowers has already arrived. Anyway, the living room of the Anderson homestead is about to be redecorated. This afternoon, Margaret, surrounded by home magazines and color samples, is discussing the problem with Ted, the house painter. Like this. Now, this shape might do for the walls. Mm-hmm. How would that go with the rug? Well, it ought to go all right. You planning on a modern color scheme, or do you want to stay with the traditional? Well, everything in the house is traditional. I don't think we should change over to the modern. Modern's all right, of course. Yeah, it's all right. If you like it. I can if I want to. Quit hollering. Oh, excuse me, Ted. Kathy! I can get a show of my own if I want to. What's the matter now? Bud and Joe are getting up a magic act. Well, let them. I want to be in it. But I don't want to be in it. Oh, dear. Mommy, would you like me if I was twins? Twins? Bud wants to saw me in half. <laughs> That's a trick. we got to have somebody. Can you put me back together? Children, I'm trying to talk to Mr. Hodges. Hi, Mr. Hodges. Hello, Kathy. Hi, Bud. Hi. I can be in the magic act without getting sawed up. Can I, Mommy? Well, let's talk about it later. Hmm? We've got to have a little shrimp like her. The trick won't work. How do I get back together? You're not going to get hurt. I'm not going to be in the show. I'm staying here with Mommy. Okay, Strayer. Now, where were we? What are you doing? Oh, we're deciding on colors for the living room. Well, I hope this is the right combination. You don't think it's too bright, do you? Oh, I think it'll be real pleasant. Has kind of an early American feeling about it. Mm-hmm. We're going to have early Americans in here? <laughs> we're talking about colors, Angel. Hello, Joe. Bud. But if you're going to use the phone in the den, close the door, hmm? No, Kathy backed out. we got to find somebody else to saw in half. Bud! That was my mom. No, she doesn't want to get sawed in half. What do you want, Mom? Close the door. Now, I... I think that will look nice on the wall. Then we'll use the lighter shade for the trim. Oh, I think you'll like it. It isn't flashy, but it's comfortable, and that's the important thing. Well, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but some of these extremely modern color ideas seem so, well, strange. Well, the way I feel, they're nice if you like them. I don't know. Margaret, I'm home. Hey, there's Daddy. Daddy's home. I'm in the living room, dear. Oh, hello, honey. Oh, hi, Ted. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Daddy, guess what? We're going to have early Americans, all colors. What's this, kitten? Ted's ready to start the painting in here. We're just deciding on some colors. Oh, good. I think those are fine. You haven't seen them yet. Oh. Well, whatever you pick out is fine with me. I thought we'd have purple walls and an orange ceiling. Sure, they look very nice. <laughs> purple walls? Just testing, dear. These are the colors we had in mind here in the folder. Yes, this would be for the ceiling and this for the trim. Mm-hmm. Well, that should be easy on the eyes. By the way, where's Betty? She had a date with old Ralph. I'm surprised she isn't in on this decorating job. Well, she and Ralph went to an art exhibit this afternoon with some friend of Ralph. A young man with a beard. I think his name was Arthur. A young man with a beard and a friend of Ralph's. Mm-hmm. That's about as dubious a recommendation as I've ever heard. Well, are we all decided on these colors? Well, they look good to me. Fine. Then I'll buy that maple chair you like and, and make some new flowered slip covers. And Mother! We're in here, Betty. Oh, Mother, I... Oh, hello, Father. Hi, Ted. Hello, Betty. What you got? Oh, I've had the most utterly magnificent afternoon, Mother. I've been in another world. Simply in another world. Transportation must have been good. <laughs> Didn't take you long to get there and back. 
Oh, don't be cornball, Father. Mm. I've discovered an entirely new plane of thought, Mother. Beauty and inspiration beyond description. What led to this discovery? Modern art. Oh, no. What you got under your arm? Look, I have a painting, Mother. An original by Arthur. He gave it to me. Isn't it stupendous? Are you sure that's the front of it? <laughs> Let's see the back. What is it? You wouldn't understand. This is not for infants. Just look at it, Mother. Doesn't it do something to you inside? Yes, it does. <laughs> What's it supposed to be? Looks like an explosion in a paint factory. <laughs> oh, Father. What's the title of it, Betty? Anger and Boiled Egg. Where's the egg? <laughs> You don't have to see the egg. That's only what the painting's about. Oh, well, that explains it. You don't understand it at all, Father. I can tell by the look on your face. Well, I know a lot of people say they understand pictures like that, but... Mother, don't tell me you're not aware of the depth and inspiration in this picture. Or maybe if I looked at it for a while. Oh, you and Father have lost touch with life. Here a man has placed his very soul on canvas. If that's Arthur's soul, he's in trouble. <laughs> Father, you can't mean what you're saying. You just can't. Dad. All right, I'm coming. Take care of Arthur's soul for a minute. I'll have to see what Bud wants. Look at this, Ted. You're a painter. You can appreciate Arthur. Where are you, Bud? Here in the den. Oh, well, what's your problem? Dad, do you know where I could find a straight jacket? Well, after what I've just heard, I think there ought to be one kicking around the house somewhere. <laughs> Joe and I are working at this magic act, you see, and we thought if we got a straitjacket and stuff, we could do one of those escapes. Underwater, maybe. I think you'd better try something else. Well, we found a silk hat, and Joe knows a guy that's got a rabbit. That's better. That's a fine trick. It won't work, though. The rabbit's too big. He won't fit in the hat. His ears stick out the top. Father, you better come in, Daddy. There's going to be a big fight. Fight about what? Maybe we could hold the rabbit's ears down with tape. <laughs> well, I won't be able to live here, that's all. I'll die. I'll simply die. Daddy, call Mr. Hodges a square. You see, the rabbit isn't supposed to be in the hat at first. And if his ears were sticking out, people would get suspicious. Which side are you on, Daddy? Mm, I think I'll go along with the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Weary old things of the past. It'll be like living in a museum. Why don't we get some mummies and old bones? What's wrong with Tallulah? <laughs> oh, you're here, Father. Please, please, say you're not going to have these awful old-fashioned colors in here. Now, wait a minute. I don't know what we're going to do, dear. Betty insists Mother, that... how can you think of living in a stodgy, outdated house? This is 1953. We know that, Princess. Look at Arthur's painting. We have to move on to new worlds. That's the new world? Oh, you keep out of it. Holy cow. Well, what do you suggest we do, Princess? What's your idea? There's only one thing to do, Father. Out with the old, in with the new. Let's be modern. Throw everything out, furniture and everything. Oh, dear. Throw out the rugs, too? Everything. That would be keen. We could slide in the floors. <laughs> well, it looks like Arthur and his painting have created something of a problem. Uh, did you see this, Ted? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> What do you think? Well, I don't know. I guess I'm stupid. Betty called him a square. Well, I didn't mean it just that way. He's just living in bygone days like the rest of you. Oh, why can't you all be modern and alert and alive like Arthur? He's only 25 and he's already been psychoanalyzed twice. <laughs> Well, I don't know. He's just lucky, I guess. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do, Mr. Anderson? Shall we go ahead? No, Father, no. Well, I'll tell you. Let's uh, hold everything, Ted. I'll get in touch with you later and let you know what we've decided. It's all right with me, as long as I know. I'll see you later, folks. Goodbye, and thanks, Ted. Oh, thank you, Father. You've awakened. Your eyes are open at last. Yes, I think I'm getting a new slant on this modern idea. Jim, you're not seriously concerned. Why not, honey? Maybe we are clinging to the past. 
How can I swing for the past? I haven't got one. We weren't talking about you, Shrimp. Daddy said we, and that's us, and us is us. But, dear, do you mean you're thinking of changing everything? I say let's try it. These modern houses are pretty popular right now. All the intelligent people are going modern. You know that, Mother. Well, I guess we're ignorant. But we've been so happy. But, Mother, what's happiness if you're not modern? That's Joe calling about the magic act. Well, don't hang on the phone. I want to call Ralph. Oh, and I can't wait to tell Arthur. We'll hang his painting right over the mantel. Jim, I don't understand this sudden change. Well, we have to accept the new things, honey. Time doesn't stand still, you know. I wonder how I'd look with a beard. You gonna buy a beard, Daddy? Oh, for heaven's sake. You'd look devastating in a beard, Father. What's wrong with it, Margaret? Arthur has a beard. Can't you just see me with beard and cigarette holders sitting in one of those beautiful modern chairs made out of string and gas pipe? <laughs> Dear, maybe you've been working too hard. Yes, sir, we'll take everything out of the room, strip it right down to the wood. Throw all this old junk away. Throw it away? My furniture? Oh, honey, you call this furniture? Why, this is just a lot of stuff to sit on and be comfortable in. It doesn't have any uh, inspiration. It doesn't have any flow to it. The lines of furniture have to flow. Well, maybe you could do this a lot cheaper by just turning the hose in here. <laughs> oh, Mother, don't be a stick in the mud. I'm not. I'm just worried. Worried about what? About your father. As Bud would say, I think he's snapped his cap. <laughs> no, sir, I think this is going to be great. I'm really getting excited about it. Oh, wonderful. Let's talk about some ideas. Oh, we're going to have the most modern house in Springfield. Now, take this living room. You know how I see it? Dear, stop squinting your eyes and pacing up and down. I'm tuning in my subconscious. I've got the colors for the living room. Walls, fire engine red, with black and white coach dogs to kind of break it up. Futuristic dogs. Ceilings will be a pale pink with green blue birds. Oh, Father, you're inspired. Positively inspired. You like it? <laughs> oh, it's Gone, Father, but utterly gone. How about you, Mother? I'm almost gone. <laughs> well, I feel we should go all the way on this. Yes, sir, I might even take a little time off tomorrow and go over and be psychoanalyzed. I <laughs> hate you, Father. Oh, I've got to tell Ralph. Bud, get off the phone. Dear. Now, relax, Margaret. I know what I'm doing. Well, I know what you're doing, too, dear. At least I hope I do. You can't handle a situation like this any other way. The only way we can bring Betty out of this passion for the modern is to go completely overboard. Well, just don't go so far overboard that you can't get back on the boat. No, no. You tried the red walls and green bluebirds, and she called your bluff on that. Where'd he go from there? That's just the beginning, honey. Before we're finished, our modern daughter will be ready to go back to hoop skirts. <laughs> Well, if Betty and Father really go modern, let themselves go, they'll do more than just redecorate the old homestead. They'll probably end up by having flying saucers carry soup to the dining room table. But every modern mother knows that breakfast is an important meal for the whole family. And I'm sure that most of you mothers know that bran is good for your family because it provides those important keep regular benefits. Maybe you've even served it in your home only to find that the family wasn't enthusiastic about its taste. Well, try it again now. You'll discover that something wonderful has happened to Bran. Yes, now, post-40% Bran Flakes have a marvelous new flavor, a magic oven flavor, and new crisp texture that's truly delicious. Matter of fact, it's so good. Many people who have tried the new post-Bran Flakes tell us it's their favorite cereal. Briefly, Mother, this means that when you serve post-40% bran flakes, you'll be giving your family the important keep-regular benefits of bran, their daily ounce of prevention, in a cereal they'll really love. Here's a catchy little tune that'll help remind you to start serving post-40% bran flakes soon. For goodness sake, eat post-bran flakes. When you do your weekend marketing, mother,
mother, be sure to get Post 40% Bran Flakes, America's largest selling Bran Flakes. They're good, and so good for you. Oh, there's action in the Anderson household today. You know that pleasant living room, fluffy curtains, nice early American furniture? Well, daughter Betty says it's got to go. From now on, everything has to be modern. A full expression of the subconscious. Artistic inspiration running rampant. As we join the Andersons now, about 24 hours have passed, and it's noon of the following day. Jim isn't home yet. Betty's in the den wading through magazines on modern living, while Bud lies on his back on the floor gazing at the ceiling, engrossed in great problems of his own. Like this. I guess the guy could get a couple dogs and train them. Oh, here's where they've used automobile tires for picture frames. Magic acts aren't so hot. We could get up a pretty good act with a couple dogs. What are you mumbling about? Joe and me are getting up an act. Oh, that again. <laughs> Betty, have you seen Kathy? She's over playing with Patty Davis. Look here, Mother. Here's some terrific ideas for the living room. We paper one whole wall with old newspapers. Wouldn't that be striking? Uh, yes, very <laughs> nice. If we could get a couple of sheep dolls, then maybe we could save up and buy a sheep. What's this? <laughs> That'd be a good act. Oh, Mother, I'm just getting barrels of ideas from these magazines. Now, here's a house in Sculpin, Oklahoma, where they have the most original floors. No rugs or anything, just sand. Oh, that would be good. You wouldn't have to vacuum. Just give the living room a good raking now and then. <laughs> I wonder if you can train a sheep. When do you think we can start, Mother? Redecorating, I mean? Well, I don't know. That's up to your father. Oh, I can't wait to get all those musty old things out of the living room. I called Ralph, you know, and Arthur was there. So Ralph put him on the phone. Oh, he was simply thrilled when I told him we were doing our house over. Modern. Well, dear, we've talked about the living room, but we... Oh, well, I that's a start. And when we finish there, we'll start on the dining room. Up, Charlie. Up. Up, Charlie. Oh, there's a stunning idea for a chandelier in the dining room. Over you go, Sam. Up. Higher. You take a bowling ball and hollow it out and put a light inside. Down, Jack. Down. Lie down, Jack. And the light comes through the holes where your fingers go in. Okay. Over here, George. Wouldn't that be striking, Mother? Oh, yes. Very. Roll over, Clyde. <laughs> Bud, who are Clyde and George and Jack and Charlie? I'm trying out names for dogs. Margaret, I'm home. We're in the den, Father. Oh, hello, Margaret. Betty, Bud. Hello, dear. Hi, Dad. Well, this has been a busy morning. Didn't you forget something, Father? No, what? You usually kiss Mother when you come home. Oh, well, we've given that up. That's old-fashioned. We're modern now. <laughs> <laughs> right, honey? Oh, Yes. None of that dull, sentimental foolishness around here anymore. This is 1953. After this, when I come home, just a good, brisk handshake all around. <laughs> Stuff? Well, I, I guess you're right, Father. You bet. I'm all in favor of this new life. We're going to go modern with a vengeance. Well, dear, don't... Please, Margaret, let's not call each other dear and honey anymore. It's so out of date. All right, Jim, but... No, that uh, Jim and Margaret, that's not for this modern day. We've got to speed things up. You just call me J, and I'll call you M. <laughs> right? Okay, M? All right, J, dear. I've great news for you, B. B? Certainly I can't call you Betty anymore. We've got to sharpen things up around here. Get on the ball. Well, if you're going to use B for Betty, how about me, Bud? That's B. We'll call you B minus. <laughs> well, big news. I've decided we can't do that living room over by ourselves. We need a decorator, a real hep artist. Gee, if we could only get Arthur, but he's too busy. I thought of that, and I scurried around this morning and found another young artist. He gave me one of his paintings to bring home. Now, see what you think of it. Now, now how do you like that? <gasps> oh, it's, it's magnificent. Holy cow, you got another one? This young man is a genius. Look at that princess. I mean, B. There's a painting that's real gone. Oh, it is. That's even goner than the other one. <laughs> is that a picture? 
Of course it is, stupid. It's beautiful. Look at that flow. Look at those dynamic colors. A brilliant example of an inverted expression of the subconscious and a throbbing symbolization of exquisite frustration. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. What is he called? Oh, the title will send you. It's called Blob. <laughs> Isn't that great? This fellow will do a decorating job for us that'll be out of this world. Oh, I know it, Father. But before we do anything, let me take the painting over and show it to Arthur. It'll only take a minute. I'll be right back. Jim, what in now, the world? Now, things are going to be all right, honey. Don't get worried. You aren't really going to have this decorator come in and... Sure, he'll be here this afternoon. But, dear, Ted has always done the painting. Don't worry about Ted. Maybe a juggling act would be better. <laughs> better than what? Dogs. I think I'll go out in the kitchen and find something to juggle. Well, don't start with the plates. Get some apples. Okay. Did you notice, Margaret? Betty's beginning to cool off on this modern idea already. Cool off? You should hear some of the ideas she has for the living room. Sand on the floor. Chandeliers made out of bowling balls. Hi, Daddy. Well, hello, kitten. Where have you been? Over to Patty. Oh, how's Patty? She's fine. I was telling Patty's mother about our new living room. Oh? I told her about the red walls and the green bluebirds. What'd she say? She didn't say anything. I guess she had a headache. She put her hands over her eyes and walked out of the room. <laughs> I'm surprised she was able to walk. I'm going out in the kitchen. Father? Father? Uh, oh, I mean, Jay, guess what? Well, what did Arthur say about the painting? He said it's the most original and exciting piece of work he's ever seen. Explosive, uninhibited, great thought and magnificent execution. Well, I knew it was a masterpiece, but I wanted Arthur to see it to be sure. Then this is the artist who's going to do the living room? Who else? He'll be over in a little while. Come on, let's go in the living room and start getting rid of all that old junk. I can't believe we're really going to starve. Well, don't you think we should... Nope, everything has to go. Now, look at this rug. What an outdated old thing this is. I don't know why we haven't gotten rid of these things long ago. The rug goes, huh? The very first thing. I think we ought to put down a nice coat of asphalt in here. <laughs> well, that would be original. This rug. I think the only reason we've held on to it is because of silly, old-fashioned sentiment. Remember, when we first moved in the house, all we had in here was this rug. We didn't have anything in the dining room. I'll never forget how we ate dinner picnic style here in front of the fireplace. We didn't have Kathy then. Just blood and me. Well, that's clinging to the past. Out with the rug. I guess this big old chair will have to go. Yes, throw that thing away. I saw a chair downtown today, perfect for this spot. It was made out of an oil drum. <laughs> oh, uh, chrome-plated. That sounds unusual. This old chair. <laughs> Remember the day we brought Kathy home from the hospital? Weighed six pounds. Looked like a doll. And I sat down in that chair, and I held her for the first time. Gee, she was cute. Well, I suppose it has to go, along with the coffee table. Oh, that coffee table. How cornball can you be? <laughs> yes, and it's all marked up. I happened to turn it over the other day. Did you ever see this under here, Betty? Oh, Ralph put that on there the night we graduated from junior high school. Look, Father, a heart with an arrow through it. An R.B. loves B.A. I'd forgotten all about that. Well, we'll get a new table. I saw a beauty downtown. The top was solid stone. <laughs> and, sir, we'll throw out all this old stuff. Father, I hate to be corny, but, well, some of these things do mean an awful lot to us. They do? They're not modern, dear. Well... Gee, I was just thinking what it'd be like without them. It wouldn't seem like home. Oh, you're being sentimental, Princess. Well, I like to be sentimental. I don't care. All right, what things do you want to keep, dear? Oh, I want to keep everything. I don't want to change anything. Well, if you insist. Front door, bud. Okay, okay. Well, I guess the artist is here. I tell him we've changed our minds. All right. I hope he'll understand. I'll explain to him. 
Hey, Dad, Mr. Hodges is here. Oh, come on in, Ted. Oh, hi, folks. Oh, Mr. Hodges, thank heavens it's you. We thought it was some artist that Father had told to come over. Oh? I have news for you, Princess. This is the artist. Ted? Mr. Hodges? Jim, why didn't you tell me? But I didn't know you could paint. Been a painter all my life. <laughs> What's the decision on the living room? Well, Betty, we've decided, Mr. Hodges, to paint the living room just the color that it is. Smart girl. Smart father. Mm, could be. <laughs> And now, before our final surprise of the show, let's go along with Jim to the kitchen as he peeks in on Kathy. What are you up to, Kathy? Nothing. Just fixing this all and post them, Daddy. Post them? Fine. Thank goodness there's something this family agrees on. Yes, post them is one drink the whole family can enjoy as much and as often as you want. Because instant post them contains no caffeine, nothing to spoil your sleep, upset your nerves. It's safe for young and old alike. And Postum is so good tasting, the more you drink it, the better you like it. See if you don't agree. Oh, and Mother, instant Postum costs only about one-third as much as coffee, cup per cup. How about treating your family to Postum often? <laughs> Well, it looked like the living room of the White Fame House on Maple Street was in for some pretty startling changes there for a while. But the slightly worn rug and the quaint old chair have a new lease on life. In fact, about all that remains of the supermodern influence in the Anderson living room this evening is a carefully framed painting on the mantel. A strange piece of art indeed. Father, I can't understand. Can't understand what, Princess? This painting by Mr. Hodges. Well, look at that painting that Arthur did, that anger and boiled egg. Who understands that? Well, that's not what I mean. How could Mr. Hodges, a house painter, do something like this? Arthur said it was brilliant, showed great depth and understanding. <laughs> well, what's so amusing? Oh, nothing except that that isn't a painting at all. I uh, framed it myself. If it isn't a painting, what is it? I took it out of Ted's pocket this morning. It's a rag he used to wipe his brushes. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Pope's 40% Brand Flakes, America's largest selling brand flakes, and Instant Postum, the drink that's entirely caffeine-free. In our cast were Dorothy Lovett as Margaret, Rhoda Williams, Ted Donaldson, Helen Strom, and Parley Bear. Mom, I think you're beautiful. Well, thank you, Johnny. You're the most beautiful woman in the whole world. Thank you, Johnny. Mom. Yes, Johnny? Can I have wheat meal for breakfast tomorrow? Sure. Make him happy, Mom, with the best hot cereal anywhere. Post wheat meal is packed full of solid nourishment, great for kids, and so wonderfully delicious. Post wheat meal cooks in just three minutes. Try rich hot post wheat meal with a picture of Roy Rogers on the package. Post wheat meal, the best hot cereal you ever ate. Highway accidents are an enemy to our nation, creating the needless waste of life and property. You young drivers between the ages of 15 and 24 can help solve this national problem. Join the Robert Young Good Drivers Club today by writing Robert Young in care of this NBC station. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West. This is Bill Foreman speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences on NBC.